my name is Julia Wolf, and I'm here with We Found New Music. You can listen to my new deluxe EP, Girls in Purgatory, out now. All right, we're back on We Found New Music. I'm so thrilled to be joined by Julia Wolf. Welcome to the show. Hello, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. We're thrilled to finally have you on the show. The deluxe EP, Girls in Purgatory, is out now. We just heard the Italian remix of In My Way. So kind of talk about that real quick. Yes, I have been searching for a very long time now to find an Italian you know, artist to collaborate with because being Italian, it's a big part of who I am, how I grew up. And because of that, yeah, I wanted to find someone, but it takes a while to, to find artists who are on the same page as you, who also can interpret, you know, what I'm saying in English and make it work for them. And ran across this, this incredible girl named Lita, who she's actually based in LA, but she's from Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, her music it was an instant like gut feeling that this was going to work if we could make it work. And yeah, I sent her the music. She was completely on board. Mm -hmm. She came back with this verse, insane melodies, like the flows are crazy. She just understood how to take the song and, and amplify it and, and put her twist on it. And um, yeah, like her lyrics are incredible in there. She says, you know, I, I don't want to keep wasting my time thinking about you. Like, don't make me feel crucified. Like, don't put me on the cross. And she's like, pray for me. Because uh, if I stop thinking about you, I'll become a better version of myself. I thought that was so cool. In My Way is definitely the track that got me into you. So it's exciting. We, we kicked off the interview with that track. And yeah. everybody revisit it. You have another second chance here to check that track out. The extended EP is out now. Tell us a little bit about the, the EP. Yeah, the EP, you know, it's called Girls in Purgatory. And it's just a reflection of how I feel when dealing with certain situations. And I don't exactly know which road I'm going to take, uh, what the right answer is. There's a lot of gray area. And it, it does make me feel like I'm in this kind of limbo, a purgatory of my own. And I just wanted each song to be relatable and to speak about how, how I deal with those types of situations. Cause you know, I grew up a very shy kid. So part of me, it's like ingrained to put other people's feelings first and like make sure everyone else is doing okay. But now that I'm older, I realize how important it is to do things for myself and base my decisions off what's best for me. But, you know, it, it's hard to, to manage that when I, I grew up such a certain way. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the EP is kind of like, you know, a, a little self-reflection of moments where I've felt like that. Of course. And it's very honest, of course. You're, you're admitting you've never been in love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, starting with the beginning of the EP, Falling in Love, which is a great track. Definitely check it's that good. out. But also, do not overlook the title track, Girls in Purgatory. It's so lush. If you like Ocean Eyes by Billie Eilish, check it out. Don't stop the EP midway through. Get through it and... <laughs> You will be rewarded greatly with, with speaking of the production is so lush. Who, who are you working with on this? Oh my gosh. So yeah, it took me years and years to even put music out because I couldn't find a producer that was just the right fit. Mm -hmm. um, but one day I met Jackson Foot. Uh, we went to school together, actually. We both went to SUNY Purchase, but we didn't really speak ever. Like we met briefly once at some event and then followed each other on social media and then years later we reconnected via instagram he heard me playing one of my songs called ghost and he was like you know what's this and basically i have not stopped working with him until since that day that was like three years ago now Amazing. and it's just been me and him yeah that's really exciting 
And but beyond him, you do all your own artwork and visuals, and you're the creative director for the music video. Yes, I just mention. yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I grew up really shy. So because of that, I was always too afraid to ask people for help. So I would just learn how to do things myself to avoid, you know, having to speak really. And uh it, it forced me to learn some production and it forced me to learn Photoshop. And then I really just fell in love with, you know, having that creative control, like just picturing something, bringing it to life instead of, you know, maybe someone, I try and work with someone and they try and change the vision. They try and input, you know, too many different ideas that I'm not crazy about. Doing it myself kind of like cuts that down a bit. And yeah, it just like makes me more self-sufficient. So I love doing as much creative stuff as I can. Totally. I can relate. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so you've had a big year. I mean, I would, I would list the specifics, but I'll let you do it. How, how, <laughs> how has, tell me some of the highlights of the past year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the craziest one was getting a, a Times Square billboard that was unreal that happened over the summer with Spotify I got picked to be a part of their fresh front fresh finds mm -hmm. program for independent artists so yeah and you know like after college I used to work at a recording studio so I would always walk through Times Square every day and you just look up at those billboards and you ask yourself like how does anyone ever end up there you know it just feels so impossible um but here we are years later so that was a huge highlight my live shows selling out huge huge highlight i that was my first string of shows and it's what i've been most like uh most looking forward to as an artist like i've just been dying to play but because of quarantine no one was able to so finally being face to face with the fans, that was a huge moment for me. Yeah, that just adds to the last year or two because we didn't know live shows were coming back. And I know, it was scary, yeah. And then you sold out so many shows. The Moroccan, <laughs> really, really cool LA debut for you. What a special moment. You'll never forget it. <laughs> never forget it. And Doing a you know, New York show, hometown, that was a dream. That's amazing. And I'm just excited to do more, you know? I have an upcoming tour with Fletcher. I'll be opening for her. That's really exciting. That's amazing. I was going to touch on that. Yeah. Uh, so Fletcher tour coming up. Uh, either way, hopefully you'll be coming back to the cities you hit the first time around and then some. So that's mm -hmm. very exciting. So 2022 is a big year coming up. And Fletcher. So yeah, I mean, you must be so thrilled that Fletcher uh, has you on that tour. I mean, you know, she is incredible. So for her to find me and reach out, like that blew my mind. I was freaking out, screaming all nine yards. Um, and we've gotten to know each other and she's such a cool girl and she has such a strong message and community and fan base. And it's really inspiring to be able to work with her, yeah. So inspiring. That's great. So um, you're an independent artist and um, seems like you've been doing all this yourself. So that's a huge, huge deal that you've been kind of working so hard and you've been getting the success all of a sudden. Um, tell me, how, what's your advice for like a, an independent artist starting out that's kind of wanting to get themselves out there? Totally. I would say don't let fear stop you. I, there was a long period of time where I was just like very afraid of failure. So I just wouldn't do anything. And that's never the solution. You have to overcome that um, because it's only doing a disservice to yourself, you know? So it's okay if you don't have a lot of knowledge in production or, or artwork or anything like that. You just give it what you got, you go for it. And I also think being consistent is very key. Uh, at least for me, you know, doing like the weekly freestyles, just posting cool Photoshop collages, like a few every week and staying on top of it, you know? Yeah. If it was easy, everyone would do it. You, you just have to like get into that rhythm and yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you're honest and you're putting yourself out there, I think. And that's a huge, you know, thing that people are connecting with. <laughs> totally. Cause if you're not authentic, if yeah. you're not true to yourself, like people see that right away. So yeah, always need to just stay true to who you are awesome. as, as it is like, that's key. Well, the EP again is out now. It's the deluxe girls in purgatory EP. Let's close out with the new track bottle of Advil. Tell us about that first. Yes, this one. Um, it's a very strict song. It's just me and the guitar and it's pretty sentimental. You know, I was driving through my hometown, which is just Long Island. Um, and I was feeling very self-reflective, like just going through old memories of where I used to be, where I am now, how long that journey was, but also how long of a journey I still have, you know? Um, there's so many goals that I have for myself. And like, like I said, growing up shy, like people underestimate you, people assume you're a pushover that, that you won't take yourself seriously, your goals seriously. And yeah, the song is just like, it's actually great for, you know, the holidays as well. Cause it, it's about like remembering how I am with my family, who, who I really am. And yeah. And just like where I want to be in the future. And it's a struggle, you know, there's ups and downs. That's right. Well, that's the added deluxe track on the new EP girls in purgatory out now. Thank you so much, Julie Wolf for joining us on. We found new music. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome.